Hello everyone. In this video, we will start with some examples involving perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines have a 90 degree angle between them. So for this example, since we know the lines are perpendicular, we can write the sum of the two angles equal to 90 degrees. Now we can solve for x. Next example, we have two lines that are perpendicular and a ray between them. We want to find the value of x first. So we can add the two angles together and set them equal to 90. Now we have a quadratic equation that we can solve by factoring or using the quadratic formula. Getting it in standard form real quick. Looks like we can factor it by looking at factors of negative 99 that add up to 2. 11 and negative 9 multiply to negative 99 and add up to 2. We end up with x equals negative 11 and x equals 9. In this example, only x equals 9 works since plugging in negative 12 produces negative results. To find angle ABC, we simply plug in 9 for x and evaluate. So we end up with angle ABC being 18 degrees. We can find angle CBD in a similar fashion by plugging in x equals 9 to either its original expression or we can use the fact that the two angles add up to 90 degrees. So a angle CBD is 90 minus 18, which is 72 degrees. In this example, we want to prove that lines are perpendicular given they form a linear pair of congruent angles. So let's draw a diagram of what we are given.
Now let's start our steps by labeling our givens. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. We are also given that angle 1 and angle 2 are linear pairs. This means that angle 1 plus angle 2 add up to 180 degrees. And since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then we can substitute it in the previous equation. Then we can combine the like terms. Divide both sides by 2 to get angle 1 is congruent to 90 degrees. Also, since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, we use the transitive property to say that angle 2 is also equal to 90 degrees. Now we can state that angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles by the definition of right angles. Therefore, L1 and L2 are perpendicular to each other by the definition of per perpendicular lines. Whoops, I wrote the symbol for parallel, not perpendicular. Let's change that real quick. Another example. First, let us write that angle 1 plus angle 3 plus angle 4 add up to 180 degrees. Then simplify a bit.
isolate the X term. Divide both sides to get X by itself. We get X equals 8. So we find the measure of angle 2 by plugging in 8 for X. Then we evaluate. So the measure of angle 2 is equal to 62 degrees. Similarly, we plug in 8 to find the measure of angle 3. So the measure of angle 3 is 28 degrees. We were given that the measure of angle 4 is 90 degrees. Measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 4 are vertical angles, so they are congruent. So the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees. Measure of angle 3 is equal to a measure of angle 5 since they are corresponding angles and the lines are parallel. So the measure of angle 5 is 28 degrees. Notice angle 2 has a vertical angle which is equal to it, so let's write that. And that angle corresponds to the measure of angle 8, so measure of angle 8 is 62 degrees as well. We can also use the fact that the measure of angle 2 is an alternate exterior angle to the measure of angle 8. Let's fill in some of the angles we know real quick. To find the measure of angle 7, 
we can use the fact that the measure of angle 8 and the measure of angle 7 are supplementary. Substitute in the measure of angle 8. Subtracting from both sides, we get that the measure of angle 7 is 118 degrees. Angle 5 and angle 6 are supplementary, so we can find angle 6 by substituting in angle 5 and isolating angle 6. So the measure of angle 6 is 152 degrees. Since the measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 1 are vertical angles, they are congruent. So the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. Now let's look at some examples with parallel and perpendicular lines on the coordinate plane. Note that parallel lines have the same slope. The formula for the slope of a line is the change in y divided by the change in x. So finding the slope of this line will give us the slope of any line parallel to it. Plugging in our values and evaluating, we get the slope is negative one-seventh. Now let's find the slope of a line perpendicular. Perpendicular lines, slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Recall that the slope we found earlier was negative one-seventh, so the slope of a line perpendicular to it will be the negative reciprocal of negative one-seventh.
so the slope of any perpendicular line will be 7. Now let's find the midpoint between the given points here. Recall that we find the midpoint by finding the average of the x and y values. So for this example, we have negative 2, negative 1 as the midpoint of A and B. Now we want to find the equation of the line perpendicular and that goes through the midpoint of A and B. So first, we need to find the slope of the line passing through A and B. And we get the slope being negative 2 thirds. So the slope of the line perpendicular will be the negative reciprocal. So the slope of the line perpendicular is 3 over 2. To find the equation of the line perpendicular and that goes through the midpoint, negative 2, negative 1, we use the point-slope form. So plugging in our midpoint, negative 2, negative 1, and our slope 3 halves, we then get it into slope intercept form. Distributing to get rid of parentheses. Subtract to get it in slope-intercept form. Now let's take a look at what this looks like on the graph using Desmos. Let's plot the points A and B along with the midpoint, negative 2, negative 1.
Now let's plug in the equations we just found that was perpendicular to the line passing through points A and B. Now let's plug in the equation of the line passing through A and B just to make sure everything looks good. Looks good.